claiming the Delano Pearl Award for the round of Brazil is Arto Kekkonen in the number 9 Gessler. These five points that Kekkonen gains from winning the Delano Pearl Award put him even with Adrian Devereaux. However, Devereaux is still ahead on countback because uh, Devereaux has more wins this season than Arto Kekkonen does. Also, you may have noticed that Kekkonen was not driving his usual silver livery. This is because the fan design paint jobs from last season have returned. The fan designs are where the TM Master Cup Series officials allowed the fans to design some of the cars in the field. In fact, uh, there are a lot more of them than there were last year, and they will be running for more than just a round of Brazil, so you'll have plenty of opportunities to see some of the paint jobs designed by TM Master Cup Series fans. Arto Kakinen is carrying one, Leonid Roderick has one, Kevin Dwyer will actually be carrying different ones in each race. Blake Kamphausen has one, you'll notice Ethan Everett is back in the 74 car because Melanie Cleveno is running the final race of the TM Europe Championship, which he has already locked up coming into that race, so congratulations to Melanie Cleveno. Lewis Kingston has one as well, you'll also notice Joao Paulo Vidal is back in the series in the number 19 Black Diamond car. Uh, Ryan Matthews in car number 11 has multiple uh, fan design liveries that he'll be using. He'll have one here and one in New York, and then whichever one the fans like most will run in British Columbia. Tyson Lauterschlager has also replaced Cody Keaton, who had his TM Master Cup Series uh, license revoked after his antics in the round of Queensland. Dan, off to you. Thank you, Lance. Arto Kekkonen is on the pole in that number nine car. If you can see there, it's uh, blue and black and a little bit of uh, pale yellow on there. And Michael Sykes in a similarly colored car. It's going to take a little while to get used to these cars. Uh, Michael Sykes will be running an orange car in New York. But as you see here, Arto Kekkonen may have left the door open a bit too wide because Adrian Devereaux is attacking already on lap one. Car number one, Adrian Devereaux is going to the front. At the end of the first lap, Arto Kekin looks like he was caught by surprise. There you see Leonid Roderick there, and that is a uh, uh, paint job reminiscent of the time, time he last won the championship. And here is Davina Henton in the uh, number six car. This is uh, the usual pink livery that Lynx runs on their cars for uh, the October races. Uh, they've, they have it for just the six car, and there's also a pink livery on the triple seven car for the same reason. Uh, well, that car is pretty distinctive, even though those two cars are essentially the same colors. Anyway, Carlos Danzello is uh, a running Independence Trophy. Uh, he's Well, he's not going to win the Independence Trophy regardless of what happens here tonight. However, he's having a pretty good start, and he's been really fast in front of the home crowd. Luciano Savarol uh, in car number three, running a bit further back in the field. Oh, Savarol into the wall! Luciano is not doing his title bit any favors, and he just runs his car up into the wall. He's still up in the wall, and I... I can't imagine he hasn't done some damage to that car. He's definitely cut a tire, I believe. So Savaral, or at least he's probably uh, has a tire going down. Yes, he did have a tire going down. Car number three into the pits already. Savaral is going to have to fix some damage, and that's going to put him way behind the eight ball way too early. Yulian Asova, car number eight, is running very well early on. Another fan paint job here. See, we're not used to seeing this much red on car number eight, but uh, Asova's confidence on the ovals appears to be improving as of late. Especially since that uh, this season uh, the cars aren't going flat out around the racetrack. Well, they weren't last year, but they could on the outside. Gaspar de Souza is back, and then very distinctive zero car. He's dropped way back in early on in case of some early chaos. As you can see, he's running 34th right now, but uh, he was decently quick in practice, so I would expect this zero car to come up through the field later in the race. Morgan Hamburg in the number 67 MRD Motorsports car. And Vitaly Karpinko in the 84 Toliati are the other two independents. Unlike Gaspar de Souza and Carlos Danzello, neither of them have been fast this week, which uh, really isn't much of a surprise. Ethan Everett is back in the TM Master Cup Series, driving the Michelin Sun 74 in Melanie Cleveno's place. Everett's got a shot in a really good car. We're going to see what he's going to be able to do tonight. So it's great to see Ethan Everett back in the 74 car. He was one of the great American hopes, but uh, look on the inside, that white car. That is Kevin Dwyer on the charge. Here is my favorite of the fan design paint jobs, car number 64, Chris Johans. This uh, Schaefer Sapphire livery um, might actually be running at Decatur as well when the fan paint jobs aren't supposed to run. So clearly, um, the sponsor really likes what the fans have been able to do uh, for this car. Even though we kind of have an overabundance of blue cars in this series, uh, this is definitely one of the nicer looking ones. Here's Kevin Dwyer's car. That's reminiscent of a, of a soda can from way back in the day. And he's put that car all the way up inside the top 10. Well, he's, well, he's going to lose a spot to Donzello in the 21 there. But the 72 car has been very quick this weekend. Kevin Dwyer, I think, can compete for a top 10 finish here. And there's Packer Carroll, another fan paint job on the inside in that white and red car. Another 
a uh, retro-ish paint job is this number 11 car driven by Ryan Matthews. Uh, he's not doing terribly well uh, right now. In fact, the Majestic Motorsports team is not expecting to get either car into the points. So, uh, morale not exactly very high about this race, uh, but looks like they're just going to give it the best shot they can. Luciano Savaral has gone, uh, well, he's a couple laps down. He's two laps down at the moment, I believe. So Savaral's got his work cut out for him. There's Ian Cooper right behind him in that magenta car right there. And here is the 67 car, Morgan Hamburg, who has uh, fallen off the pace even faster than the Tutino cars. So that kind of shows you where MRD Motorsports has been all throughout this season. I guess they've been focusing too much attention on their Arla program, or maybe they just can't get their hands around the MAO3 very well. Joel Rodriguez is back in the series as well in car number 08. Power Sting Incorporated, the team he's driving for, will be the Lycoya factory team in 2013. And Lycoya Golden Boy, Greg Woodard, will be jumping into the second PSI car alongside Kurt Pliskin. It'll be pretty interesting to see how uh, they work over there. And Joel Rodriguez will be a part of this that effort as well, because he is going to be their third driver. So it's good to see Rodriguez has a solid future. He's been out of the series uh, for a while. Joao Paulo Vidal is back in the Black Diamond Racing 19 car. Uh, he's running very well this weekend, but uh, he's not actually scheduled to be president in any other race this year. He did pretty well last year in the Katsev, but his race didn't exactly last very long, from what I can recall. Vidal has been running in uh, Brazil's National Stock Car Tour, and uh, they run road courses pretty much exclusively, so I'd say it's a pretty good job for someone with very little oval experience. Luciano working to get one of his laps back, and he's helping Ian Cooper in that magenta car to the front. It's pretty easy to pick out Ian Cooper's car from Davina Hentons because, uh, well, they have pink and black in the uh, opposite places. Hentons' car has got more pink in the back, whereas... Cooper's is right in the front, so it's pretty easy to pick those two cars apart, fortunately. Uh, hard to miss them uh, with that bright pink on there, but Luciano uh, kind of helping out other cars unintentionally. Blake Camphausen has been uh, uh, pretty strong so far this weekend, and uh, I'm a little surprised because Camphausen's really been a bit of a disappointment this year. wonder if uh, he wasn't rushed into that ride too early. We'll have to see. Oh, we got a engine failure on car number five. Zach Duff, car five. Lost an engine, that's definitely going to be the first retirement of the event. See if he can pull it off the- Oh, the Silva slides in his oil and hits him! So, we've got car five going- Oh, we got two cars in the wall, that's passing in, and finally I can tell which one of the Majestic cars that is without having to look at it again, but yes, that is Mika passing in, because Ryan Matthews has a fan livery on it, and that is Rodriguez that he hit, another very distinctive car. Um, so, uh, that's gonna be props for passing in. And for um, Rodriguez, Nasova and Duff are both out. Hodges Walter Racing had a disastrous pit stop on both cars. Adrian Devereaux and Luciano Savarol are both contending for the championship. And that is the absolute wrong time to have a major screw up in the pits like that. But now we're going to see why Devereaux had a long pit stop. And, ah, got run into by Michael Sykes. Didn't help that the pit crew also apparently uh, flubbed the... Uh, left rear tire stop as well and as you can see right there the officials are going to be looking at that after the race anyway Packer Carroll car number two is going to also exit the race very early on after a mechanical problem takes him out under yellow not looking making the Volpe engineers look any good but he's taking a sweet time to get off the racetrack and I don't know why he pulled to the outside instead of the inside kind of jammed things up um, unnecessarily anyway there was some drama under the yellow that we missed Arto Kakinen's leading the race, but apparently he passed the triple seven car of Ian Cooper under the yellow flag. So, Arto Kakinen's going to have to do a drive through the pit lane, and uh, I'm not quite sure where the officials got that call from, but uh, regardless, Arto Kakinen is going to abide by that, and he, we're going to see car number nine heading down to to serve his uh, stop, uh, stop and go penalty, sorry. Uh, coming, he's gonna go drive through the pit lane, stop at his pit stall, and then go, but this is a huge setback for the number nine team. He is one contending for the championship, and all the championship contenders have been running into problems very early on in the race. Except one. Leonid Roderick in car number four is uh, probably got a big old grin on his face because this is really going to help his title hopes. And uh, remember, he's running New York. All of his title rivals aren't. And uh, by the way, isn't Inglesby Brazil a major sponsor of this race? Um, I don't know. Got it. I don't know where I get some of these crazy ideas. Anyway, here's Davina Henton in car number six, attempting to dislodge Ian Cooper from the lead of the race, and oh my, that's too much pink in one shot almost. But anyway, here comes Scott Bates in the 88 car, and the only other car with some sort of pink on it, Joao Paulo Vidal in the 19 on the way as well. Uh, there's Vidal in the background. 
that sort of black and purple car. It's not really a pink, but anyway. Uh, Bates in the 88 car having a run on Henton. This 88 car has been pretty fast here. Not really a surprise. Scott Bates on the inside of Henton, and he is going to go to the front. The two EFR cars. Really been quick here. Roderick on the chart as well. Mika Pasanen has been making repeated pit stops to make sure that he's not going to get pulled off the course for being too slow. But given how the officials treated Cody Keaton in this series, I wouldn't worry about that too much if I was him. Anyway, back up to the front of the pack. As you see, Scott Bates has been passed by Leonard Roderick on the Schaefer Sapphire. Chris Johans, that 64 car, on the inside. As Johans is going to take over second, here comes Matthias Taub and Yamino Tenchi as well into the mix. Chris Johans in the, in the Schaefer Sapphire has, has the lead of the race after 41 of 150 laps, so almost the one-third completion distance. As you go back through the field a little bit, you will notice that Gaspar D'Souza has worked his way up into, into 11th place. So uh, D'Souza really on the move. As you see, Roderick now has taken over the lead of the race again. Adrian Devereaux is now sneaking his way back to the field. He did not lose a lap after that uh, disastrous pit stop. And he is uh, working around Yamino Tenchi. That is Joao Paulo Vidal in front of him. Adrian, uh, Adrian Devereaux looking on Leonid Roderick now. So Devereaux back up where he needs to be, but he's got to be in front of that four car, and I'm pretty sure that's where he set his sights. Arto Kekkonen, you might notice, is back in 30th place. He's a lap down, so that's why he um, so that's why he didn't show up on the um, uh, timing monitor there. Anyway, one lap down, he's working on making that lap up. So we're gonna see if Arto Kekkonen is able to do that because I think if Kekkonen can get back in the lead lap, whoa, Vidal! Kekkonen can get back in the lead lap. I think he'll be a contender for sure. But Vidal there in that 19 car almost threw a block that on Ian Cooper that was not going to work. I don't think I would have done that because Cooper has a tendency to stick his nose in sometimes where it doesn't belong. Anyway, Kevin Dwyer in the 72 car is coming alive. Kevin Dwyer, one of the great American hopes of the future. Uh, he is certainly, um, well, he's got some. He's got a really fast hot rod under him tonight. Roderick does too in that four car. But Dwyer really showing some speed here in that car. Ah, looks like he didn't necessarily make a good move there to get behind that lap car. Held him up. That lap car of Michael Sykes, interestingly enough, and that sort of held him up. He's trying to find a way back in so he can get his car back to the bottom of the racetrack. So Kevin Dwyer in that 72 car. Here's a uh, car Lance is very fond of. This paint job by Anthony Griffith. But he's having some problems in the Dalton Blackbird. He's behind uh, the two Tutinos of Tyson Lautenschlager and Trevin Terrell. Of course, after Cody Keaton got his license revoked, Tutino stuck Lautenschlager back in the 42 car. And, well, he's running with Trevin Terrell. And, uh, frankly, I think a lot of people are happy to have Lautenschlager instead of Keaton in that 42 car. And here we are back with um, Azuma Kazuyama, car number 18. As he is beginning to work his way through the field in the Nemoto, they weren't expecting to have a really good week end either, but they're, well, clearly having a good run so far. Now, Arto is back on the lead lap as it stands right now, but he needs a yellow flag, uh, well, right about now, really, because he's got uh, Johans Devereaux breathing down his neck, uh, Savaral trying to get a lap back. Just now, now both these guys need a yellow right now, but I don't think they're going to get it. Gaspar D'Souza and car number zero is working his way back up through the field. Slowly but surely, I would expect this zero car to be there when it matters. Um, we're going to have to wait and see, though, the Alex Harrison car. Morgan Hamburg and Joel Rodriguez are about to go a lap down. There you see Arto Kekkonen in the nine. Well, he's not the leader of the race. The 88 car of Scott Bates is, but the 67 is slowing. Morgan Hamburg brings it in to the pits on lap 71 to start green flag pit stops. Why is the slowest car in the field been the first to pit? Anyway, Scott Bates in car number 88 has gotten around Arto Kakinen, so Kakinen back a lap down. And now the 88 car is going to be coming in this lap. Lap 72, Scott Bates. Yes, Bates is into the pits. Devereaux comes with him. But another pit lane disaster with the one car. I'm not sure why, but apparently Devereaux stalled the car in the pits, and it took a, it, the car took a sweet time refiring. Everyone else hit the pit lane on lap 73. And Scott Bates is now in the lead on lap 80. Devereaux did get the car started again, but he is well down the order, and I think he's off the lead lap as well. So disaster for car number one. Roderick is sitting in sixth place, and he is the only one of the title contenders in the points, as you can see there on the left. Vidal, Joao Paulo Vidal, is running in an awesome third in front of the home crowd. Why isn't he in TM Lights or anything like that? Because he certainly is quite handy on the ovals, despite having very little experience on them. Uh, so Vidal 
uh, in car 19 having a very, very strong run in front of the home crowd. In fact, Black Diamond Racing, I think, really needs a good run like this in order to secure their future in the series. Azuma Kazuyama and Marcus Leonard fight over fourth place. I don't think either of them would have expected to be this high ever. Uh, Leonard in that triple nine car was struggling in practice, and Kazuyama was as well. So Xenos and Nemoto have not really been quick this year at all, but uh, they're putting on a good show right now. But here is Devereaux back on the track. But in order to make his night worse, he's called back into the pit. He's called back in for speeding in the pit lane. Considering how many laps down he is at the moment, uh, it's not going to matter much how many more penalties you give him. He's probably going to wind up in the same position anyway. I think he's something like five laps down at the moment, so he's, uh, well, clearly having a disastrous evening. Tyson Lautenschlager, car number 42, has been having a really nondescript night. Not much has happened to him in this uh, Tutino, and that's, uh, oh, well, I just jinxed him. Uh, Lautenschlager just goes out of the race after that huge plume of smoke. He was running in 23rd place. Davina Henton and Scott Bates have to deal with uh, two rather fast backmarkers, Luciano Savarell and Arto Kakinen, so uh, it's going to be a bit of an annoyance for the leaders, but uh, they're still putting on a pretty good show. Arto Kakinen is only one lap down, so I can I can understand why Kakinen would fight uh, Savarell, why, why uh, Kakinen would fight the leaders in order to get his lap back. Savarell, however, is many, many laps down. I'm not really sure why he's up there unless he's just trying to impress the home crowd, which... Uh, I kind of understand as well. As you see Savarall going around Henton, and as you see uh, Scott Bates is going to have to let Arto Kekkonen go. Trevin Terrell is holding on to 16th place in the Tutino. Fantastic run so far by Terrell, and uh, he's had a pretty uh, pretty good runs before with Tutino in the beginning of last year. Actually, no, he was with uh, Trevor Carrington's team at the beginning of last year. Uh, my mistake. So, Terrell having a pretty good run in another slow car. Scott Bates in the 88, Davina Henton in the 6 car have run into lap traffic. That is Rodriguez, the 08 car. Ah, Henton takes advantage. Uses the 08 car as a pick, but whoa, Rodriguez almost cuts off Henton there. That could have been a really big crash. Bates lets the 3 car of Savarall go by. And then he makes a run on Henton and gets by. Great battle up front between Scott Bates, the veteran, and Davina Henton with very little experience but a lot of determination. Henton trying to win her first ever Master Cup Series race. Bates trying to win his first of the year. Now, as you've probably noticed, Arto Kekkonen is now back in the lead lap in car number nine. And uh, looks like Bates might not be able to catch him as easily as he did before because he's got Luciano breathing down his neck. Kevin Dwyer is still running in the top ten. He's dropping back just a little bit, but Dwyer has told his crew that he's just taking care of the tires. And judging by the lines he's running, I can believe that. Uh, Kevin Dwyer in that 72 car running just a little higher than Donzello coming in into the corner right there, and uh, or maybe it looks like he is going to attack Donzello and keep the 21 behind him. I'll have to wait and see, but Dwyer looks like he's just saving his stuff for later on. And here is Henton, who's gotten around Scott Bates to take the lead back, and now he's going to put Arto Kekkonen back a lap down, so the 9 car must have really bobbled there, and we missed it, but um, Henton has now gotten around the 88 car and gone back to the lead, but the 88 car, Scott Bates is coming back. Bates attacks Henton, and he's going to take the lead away. Great stuff up front. Henton now on the charge in car number six. On the inside of Scott Bates, the Lynx Volpe moves back up to the front. Henton, we believe, will be confirmed with the new Lynx Racing Team for 2013. She's certainly gaining a lot of attention here for the right reasons. As Scott Bates now begins to pull away from Henton as they encounter lap traffic. Now, Adrian Devereaux up there in the one car, and as you can see right here, He's an example for every backmarker out there. Great gentlemanly driving from the reigning champion. He's well out of the way of everyone else, not really giving anyone any problems. Ian Cooper got, uh, unfortunately, stuck behind him, but that's just the way this track works. Devereaux, the epitome of a gentleman on the racetrack, as you can clearly see here. Uh, every backmarker out there, take note. Kevin Dwyer and Joao Paulo Vidal kick off uh, green flag pit stops on lap 116. Great runs from both of these guys tonight. Kevin Dwyer looks like he's actually picked up the pace at the end of the run. Blake Camphouse in the 15 car. He's got some problems. And, uh, oh, the 15 car is slow on the racetrack. Why is he not on the apron? Uh, I think he's dropping fluid on the racetrack. And, oh, Martinez has run into him. What? Uh, Martinez runs onto something and slides into him. Uh, wow. Now, at... Now, during his post-race interview, Martinez said that he slid in some fluid and ran into the 15 as a result. I don't entirely buy that, but at the same time, I'm wondering what the 15 car of Blake Camphausen was doing, just kind of sitting in the middle of the racetrack like that. So, uh, and he didn't draw a caution either until Martinez turned him around. 
So, uh, I'm really not sure what to say about that. Anyways, Henton back in the lead in car number six. That's uh, Cassie Alm in the 18 right there. Bates in second. They resume their battle that they had before. Kaziyama kind of in the in the middle of a rock and a hard place as uh, several of the lap cars go by. As uh, I think we've got some problems in the back here. Is there something wrong? Oh, we got Ian Cooper. Oh, the 88 car just lost it. Scott Bates has lost it. And Luciano Savaro was just right there. An 88 car. It looks like he suddenly had a tire go down. And Luciano Savaro just wrong place, wrong time. Oh. Just Luci oh, just can anything go right for him tonight? We're gonna, have to, we're gonna have to watch right here. Yep, it looks like Bates knew that he had a problem. Was gonna bring it down to the pits. He hit, uh, he hit the three car, and the three cars went hard into the wall. But uh, wow, that's just uh, well, Scott Bates uh, clearly did everything he could to try to not make that a bigger wreck than it was. But when you cut a tire like that in front of the whole field, uh, that's never going to end well. Marcus Leonard in the lead of the race on lap 129. There are only 11 cars on the lead lap. As you see right there, Kevin Dwyer running in third place. Johans making a move on the inside. Car number 64 moving towards the front. Johans looks like he's going to take the lead from Henton and Leonard. And yes, Chris Johans into the lead of the race in car number 64. As you can see right here, another replay of that. As you see Camphausen in front of him. Henton now follows Johans into, into second. Now Henton wants the lead. Ashby running with Henton there. We haven't uh, seen or heard much of Ashby all race. But she's been quietly waiting in the hunt. There comes Kevin Dwyer in the in that red and white six, uh, 72 car. Excuse me. Uh, getting a little caught up in myself here. Anyway, Dwyer on the inside to take over second. And now Dwyer is going for the lead. Kevin Dwyer is uh, going for the lead. He's got to get around the six car of Henton. Kevin, uh, Kevin's got to be careful, though. Carlos Donzello is back there. Donzello's never won a Master Cup Series race. And that's an adventure. Oh, go. oh make a possum and look out, look out. That could have been a huge catastrophe. Right there, Donzello gets around Dwyer. And Yamino Tenshi in the 25 car comes into the mix. Tenshi, car 25, on a charger. Tenshi has not won a race since the beginning of last year. But the Japanese driver looking for her second Master Cup Series win. Kevin Dwyer, Carlos Donzello have not won a race yet in their careers so far. Donzello now leading in front of the home crowd. As you see, Vidal back there. He's, he's in contention for this as well. Yamino Tenchi, car 25, in, in the hunt as well. Chris Johans, can't count him out in the 64 car. Uh, car number 64, Chris Johans, I believe just said fast lap of the race. Here comes Tenchi and Ashby, four wide now, with the lap car of Luciano Savaral. As you see, now Ashby comes to the lead. Dwyer right there behind Ashby in the 72 car, that white car, but Ashby now in the lead. In car 55, Kevin Dwyer on the inside. And now we've got problems with Tenchi. Tenchi in trouble with eight laps to go. Tenchi, did, did Tenchi cut a tire down? Or has Tenchi just run out of fuel on that car? I believe she might have had a tire problem with car 25, and that's very, very unfortunate. But if it's fuel problems, then she's clearly not the only one in trouble. Guess who's in the lead? Ethan Everett with less than 10 laps to go. But he's got to fend off Kevin Dwyer as Dwyer on the inside takes the lead back from car number 74. Kevin Dwyer now moves into the lead of the race. So now Dwyer leads. He's probably going to be moving over to the Mitchell and Sons team next year. That is the hot rumor in the garage. But now we've got Dale Roswell and Carlos Donzello on a charge for a podium place. And that is Lewis Kingston, that gray and, uh, gray and blue car. Another fan design paint job on the 17 car. We haven't really seen that car at all tonight. But Lewis Kingston is there when it matters. So are Roswell and Donzello as Kevin Dwyer now trying to hold off Ethan Everett in the lap car of Michael Sykes who's being a big nuisance at the moment. Sykes trying to, uh, looks like Sykes trying to stay in front of Kevin Dwyer and Ethan Everett but he's given Everett a great chance to take the lead back. Ethan Everett moves back into the lead of the race around Kevin Dwyer and now Everett back in the lead. Donzello is on the hunt. If you think Kevin Dwyer is popular back in the States you have no idea what the crowd reaction will be like. The very partisan crowd will be like if Donzello manages to pull this off and win the race. But now Dwyer is going to have a run on Everett into turn one. Everett gives him room. Dwyer makes a very bold move on the inside of Everett and takes over the lead of the race. But something's gone wrong with the 21. Carlos Donzello is slowing. The 21 car is pulling down onto the apron. Oh, not quite. He's lo he almost lost the back end of that car, so I think he's got a tire down. Donzello almost lost it when he was coming into the pit lane. 
So a huge, huge disappointment for Carlos Anzello, who was in position to possibly play spoiler and take his first win. Oh, does that not sound like Lance Andrews' luck? But we got a white flag. One lap to go with Kevin Dwyer and Ethan Everett. One, two. <clears throat> Dwyer on the inside of Michael Sykes in car number 44. And Ethan Everett not close enough to make a run on him. Coming off the final corners and onto the main straightaway. Kevin Dwyer is going to win his first ever Master Cup Series race in Brazil. Kevin Dwyer, car number 72, has done it. He's pulled it off and he has taken home his maiden victory in Brazil. He has got to be thrilled about that and Team Star USA has continued their winning streak because Team Star USA in all of its various incarnations has never gone a season without a win. And Kevin Dwyer has just made sure of that and Team Star USA, of course, most likely out of the series at the end of the year. What a great way to go out with Kevin Dwyer bringing them to a victory. Ethan Everett, one of their uh, hot prospects and one of their ASCC drivers, second. And Lewis Kingston makes it three fan paint jobs on the podium. So great effort there by the Nomoto guys. Didn't expect to see them on the podium, but Kingston has pulled it off again easily. He has been one of the most impressive drivers of the season. Davina Henton, fourth, Chris Johans, Marcus Leonard, all did very good jobs out there. Joao Paulo Vidal, give him a pat on the back for coming home seventh. Ashby in eighth. Dale Roswell apparently ran out of fuel with a couple laps to go. He wound up ninth. Leonid Roderick in car number four had some late pit stop difficulties, dropped him off the lead lap. Matthias Taub is in a similar situation. Azuma Kazuyama, Charlie Waters, Jose Luis Martinez, Gaspar de Souza down in 15th place. And yes, I do say down in 15th place, and that's an Independence Trophy team. I think that team could have had a much better finish tonight if they didn't make some uh, costly errors late in the game in the pits. Ryan Matthews brings a Majestic Motorsports car into the points. They weren't expecting to do that. Kurt Pliskin, Yamino Tenchi. Arto Kekkonen stayed a lap down, but he got home a couple points that he desperately needed. And Carlos Donzello, what could have been? Major story here. Does his luck not sound like Lance Andrews's? Came so close to possibly playing spoiler, and all he gets is a single point. And let's have a look at the Drivers' Championship. As they enter New York, Archo Kekkonen has a two-point lead over Adrian Devereaux. Luciano Savaral, 27 points back. That doesn't sound like much, but Leonid Roderick right there, 19 points off the lead. Keep in mind, he is the only one of the cars eligible for the championship that is actually starting New York. So he's most likely going to take a pretty big lead after New York in British Columbia. So I think Roderick is definitely in the catbird seat to take his fifth TM Master Cup Series Drivers Championship. Unless, of course, things go wrong for him in New York. And keep in mind, at British Columbia and Decatur, who knows what can happen. Every point counts, and you can clearly tell because Arto Kekkonen only scored to only scored a couple points today but it was just enough to get him ahead of Adrian Devereaux in the championship and speaking of every point counting let's have a look at the Independence Trophy standings Gaspar de Souza in the zero needs to finish fifth or better in his uh, last Independence Trophy run if he's to have any shot of winning the Independence Trophy at all Danny Salvin in the 81 car on the other hand I think only needs to finish somewhere around 25th in order to uh, take the Independence Trophy for 2012. It's going to be a very, very interesting battle as they come to the final race for the Independence Trophy, the round of British Columbia, because the Independence Trophy will not be in action for New York, because New York is technically a special event.